Oi you, it's time for another episode of Dorothy and the Dealer. Let's tune into the conversation. Um, have you got a song for today? Um, no, I don't actually have a song for today. I was just singing one. What was I singing? <laughs> Close one more door. Right. You don't have to. Close one more door. Where, where, look, hurt anymore. I don't know that one. Is shutting the door actually going to stop you hurting, though? Do you know what I mean? Is all the pain go away because you shut the bleeding door? Don't walk away from me. And does the pain stay on if you leave the door open? And what the fuck has the door got to do with pain? I like that song. I don't know who it is. I don't I've heard know. Of it before. I think he just invented it. Yeah, it's Whitney in the Houston. Oh, is it? That's why. Who's the, Whitney the, Houston? That's why the attempt to sing it was very, very basic. I asked Lola if she knew Grimes today. I'm like, do you know who Grimes is, Lola? And she goes, no. And I'm like, okay, so do you know any of Grimes' songs? She goes, no. And I said, okay. And then I played a song. She said, oh, I know this song. But you know, they're giving you that attitude of... The fuck are you, grey-haired old man? Asking I, me who, I, I know am who these getting bands are. quite a lot of attitude from her recently. Mm, she's very attitudey. I think like, she's got since she got those braces. I don't know. I feel like it has been <coughs> since she's mm, got the braces. It's like attitude. The other day she woke up. She was I, I. She was in the bed with me. She slept in the bed with me, or I slept in the bed with her when I was finishing leaving before I left mm, your place. Mm, mm. Woke up in the morning. I looked at her, and her first look to me was this grimace, mm. and I'm like, what, what? Very mm. little, mm. like, cuddly, mm. long ago. She's still cuddly, but mm. it was just, she's got this teenagery little mm. She gives me a little atti- attitude and now. she gets out of the car now and I just call her prissy face. So she gives me this big <laughs> prissy face. I'm like, hey, prissy face. But um, trooper. <laughs> she's cute. She's I'm so going to go see her today. Um, okay, so. What are um, you doing with her today? Um, she asked for ages, she's asked for ages to get her nails done. Right. And I, I refused and refused and refused because she wants them done in a particular way. And right. then um, and then she threw the whole it's my value thing at me and I went, oh, okay. Yeah. So I had to do you it went, that. Screw you, Lola. No, I didn't. I'm like, okay, good work. You you spoke to me in terms of your values and I have to reward <laughs> that. But um, – I had to do it this particular time because she, you know, it, it, it's now is the time to do it. Like I told her it was going to be now. So right. um, I told I made her wait. Anyway, so, yeah, I think it was cute that she spoke to me in terms of her values. So, so let's talk about done. this question we had. Well, um, we've had a few people. I know like times are a bit rough at the moment for a few people or people are experiencing it as rough time at the yeah. moment. With um, some of what's going on, interest rate rises, um, things like that. And um, not just that, but just the, the price of a lot of stuff is going up. You know, mm-hmm. even I look at my shopping bill or whatever and I notice that you're not getting as much bang for your buck when you're, when mm. you're going out to the shops and stuff like that. So um, I, don't, I don't really notice it and I'm really grateful for that. But I know that there's people out there that are noticing it and Mm -hmm. we've had a few people sort of say well how how do you actually get ahead like they understand that what we're trying to show them I suppose but how do you actually get ahead if you're living paycheck to paycheck you're um struggling to make ends meet and um and things have kind of escalated a little bit where it was tight to begin with and now it's taken that next step and mm-hmm. how, do, how do you how do you work it so I think um what I'd like to do is just help with the concepts of that and maybe a few tips and tricks to help with that and I think one of the things I spa- I say to my um uh, you know anyone that's in the coaching the wealth principles coaching with me in the zoom calls there's two ways of looking at it, right? Um, You want to look at the supply and you want to look at where you're spending your money, right? Right. And I think the first place to look at it is where you're spending your money. I remember one time we sat down and did the Wealth Principles with you and realised that before we had had separate accounts for some of the things, we realised how much money you were spending on certain aspects. Do you know what I mean? You know, like um, without realising it. Do you know what I mean? I'm the same. It's like... when you when you do a deep dive, you realise, okay, oh my gosh, I'm actually spending quite a bit of money on this, 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 this or this, right? 
So I think the first thing that everybody has to do is you have to actually be real with what where your money's going. Mm-hmm. And I think for a lot of people, they don't want to do that because when they do that, they realise that they're spending more than they're earning mm-hmm. or that they're, they're, where they're spending the money is really not aligned with them getting ahead. Mm-hmm. And so people want to dig their head in the sand about actually looking at where they're spending the money. And what I've found is it doesn't matter how bad it is, the moment you actually bring light to it and you look at it, it actually makes such a massive difference Mm. because now you've got some like measurable ways of of being able to handle that. So what I mean by that is... Prior to it, you're in your head, you're like, oh, I'm spending more than I'm earning and it's stress and it's worry. But when you actually look at it, you can say, I'm spending $12.50 a week more than I earn or I'm spending $310.27 more than I earn per month. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So now it's, it's measurable. Mm-hmm. Now you've got, okay, now I've got $310 that I have to work with mm-hmm. or $12.50 or whatever. Um, that I've actually got to work with. Does that make sense? So regardless of how big or small the number is, it's at least measurable. So then you can do something with it. Do you know what I mean? Then you can go and find. And the first thing I'd say to people is after you've looked at it, the first thing I say is that where can you, especially if if you feel like you're really tight with that, Mm -hmm. where can you pull back a little bit? In order to find that twelve dollars that you need, or that three hundred dollars that you need. Yeah, I think I think perspective is really really important when you're stressed about things because the reason you're stressed is because you have no me- measurement. So getting perspective on what the actual how big is the hole, how big is the gap, how big is the problem, or getting perspective and realizing there is no hole, there is no gap, mm. that you're actually able to increase your savings. And a lot of y- people find that as well, that there isn't a hole. They just, yeah. They've just they just not really looked at it properly. Mm. And then when people get in and look at it, like you find places where – so people ask questions like, how do, I, you know, how do I find this money? Well, you know, you have to unsubscribe from some of the things you're subscribed to. You know, if you're on Binge and you're on Prime and you're on, you know, Netflix and, you know, you're on Disney, do you need all of those subscriptions? So being able to pull back on some of those things. The other thing is, is that it's all about supply and demand. It's pushing you a great – demand on yourself to be more organized, more disciplined, more diligent, more focused, and be able to go and speak to the companies, the mortgage company, the banks, whatever. And I hear, like, every time I send a person to the bank, they come back with good news. They come back and go, fuck, they dropped a percentage off. My old man well, said it to me the other day. He didn't even, he just went and spoke to the bank and they went, yep, no problem, Mr. Bean, we'll drop three quarters of a point off, well, which I is think, fucking huge. And I think the first step is that, the first step is finding how you can, um, where, so the first step I think is once you've looked at it, you find out where you can mm-hmm. reduce. So then, like you said, let's say you've got subscriptions in too many areas, then you can pull back on some of those things. Maybe you, you're noticing that you're eating out quite a lot. Maybe you can pull back on that a little bit. Maybe you're noticing that the um, the types of um, – there's ways that you can save money where you're, where, when, when you're looking out that way, right? But then, then when you're doing things like um, going to the banks and stuff like that, how I see that is as that – this is – you're in charge of this. You can shop around. People don't think that they can shop around for banks. People don't think that they can shop around for insurance. People don't think – I mean, you were on the phone the other day for about 30 minutes, maybe 20 or 30 minutes, mm-hmm. and you got your insurance reduced by about $700 for the year. Is mm-hmm. that right? Yeah. Right. And that $700, that's worth the 20 minutes on the phone call, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's like – people think that just because it's there that they can't be competitive. You can be competitive with your interest rates. You can be competitive with your um, insurances, etc. So the people that do the best at the wealth principles are actually the people that every month they choose an area and they find a way to reduce their outgoings in that area. Mm-hmm. And that includes, like I said, the banks, insurances, phone company, internet, um, all those sorts of places. They find ways to go and reduce that. To me, that puts a demand on you. So yes, it was focusing on the supply, but it puts a demand on you because then you have to have those tough conversations. Then you can't just be um, 
lackadaisy about the whole thing, right? You have to actually get in and you actually have to actually go to the bank. Right. You actually have to go make that phone call. You actually have to look at what's going on there. So as a result of that, the demand gets placed on you. So I think a lot of people, the first place they look is supply. And for the very first, the, that that first kick, that first um, um uh, saving that they need to find. The supply, sure, it's a good way to make sure that you can reduce what your outgoings. Right. But you want to be focusing on the demand, right? Mm-hmm. You want to be focusing on putting a demand on yourself. So putting a demand on yourself means going and having the conversations that are awkward, going and ex- uh, extending your bills, going and extending and and, and finding a way to um, reduce certain um, – certain, um, uh, expenses, you know, insurances and stuff like that. And then you want to be putting a demand on yourself in a in a new way to find new sources of income. So I, I just let me lean into that conversation for a second, right? Because one of the things that happens for people in that moment is they will go, yeah, okay, so I've gone in and I've had a look. I've put a, dem- a demand on things and I've had a look at, okay, if I get rid of this subscription here, if I uh, reduce my mortgage here, it's still only going to give me this amount of money. Correct. So, you can't. You what has to ha- what people need to understand is that when you're focusing on the demand, you should have no attention on the supply, because if you're focusing on the supply, then you're not focusing on the demand. So what happens then is that when you focus on the demand, if you can understand your peripheral vision widens because you're looking in places where you've never looked before. So your peripheral vision has to widen. So your conscious vision, your peripheral vision widens. When your peripheral vision and your conscious vision widens, then what also widens is the peripheral vision and the, and the, phys- and, and the conscious vision around the supply. So you should not be trying to predict the ways in which the supply comes to you the way in which the supply comes to you should be based on the amount of demand that you put on yourself. Meaning, to those people that are organized, diligent, disciplined, and focused, more is given. To those people that are not, more is taken away. So this is why we say all the time, financial growth is spiritual growth because what happens is when you become more organized, more diligent, more disciplined, you are widening your peripheral vision and your conscious vision around your ability to handle money. So therefore, money then comes to you in ways that were unpredictable while your peripheral vision wasn't widened. So if your peripheral vision is less and that's how you've always been running things, then you will be going, oh, no, no, this is not possible because, you know, I know how the supply works and I know how the demand works. But when you increase the demand... And you have you will be open to an element of surprise of how things actually find you. More ways, like you've seen it, and and you've throughout your career, I've seen it throughout my career. That the more I put demand on myself, the more deals come to me, the more opportunities come to me, the more I've been picked up, the more I've been given, the more people want to travel with me, spend time with me, hang out with me, et cetera, et cetera, because I've been growing. Mm. Does that make sense? And I don't go. Oh, I'm only going to grow if the time turns up for me to go and make the call or no, if the money turns up in order, for me, in order for me to go and buy the product or the money turns up in order for me to go and do the event, it doesn't work that way. No, you, you have to, you've you got to step up first and then the money comes, yeah. right? And, and then re- the and time comes. Yeah. And, and, you, the- and then really the story becomes, you know, the, the people on the other end of the screen when you're doing wealth principles calls, hey guys, you, you, ne- you let me tell you a story. Let me tell you what just happened to me. Let me tell you what happened when I did this. Let me tell you what happened when I did it's that. It's kind of funny because it, like I, mean, I remember just actually recently I was speaking to one of the guys who a, a year ago I said to him, um, this time next year you're going to be in a totally different position. And he kept saying, but how, but how, but how? And I'm like, you just have to follow along the system because if you follow along the system, it naturally will do it for you. And he is doing really well at the moment. He just got, the, I think his partner just got a bonus. There was they're, they're, they're flying in comparison to where they were last year simply because he kept his focus on the demand. So you did say about not focusing on the money, but I think that... Sometimes that money aspect. No, that's of it. It. Don't focus on the supply. The supply, sorry, don't focus on the supply. But that sometimes is the catalyst for for helping people to focus on the demand. For example, mm-hmm. if you've got somebody who has, if they look at their accounts and they're three hundred dollars short, let's say, mm-hmm. right? 
that $300 a month can be the catalyst for the demand. Now, instead of looking at it as $300 a month, they might look at it as, I don't know, $75 a week or $80 a week or whatever it is for right. the wear. And then they can figure out, well, what, where, where is that? How can I um, step up? How can I add more value, et cetera? So like, I, like we say to anyone who's reducing debt, like if you're a massage therapist and you've got to make $250 a week, then switch how you think about it and go, well, that's actually two extra massages a week that Mm -hmm. I need to think about. Mm -hmm. So therefore, your focus comes off the supply and goes on to the demand. How can I encourage two new people every single week or two people every single week to come, extra people to come and get a massage? Right. Because that is going to help me sort that out. Now, my view on that is instead of focusing on two people, focus on triple it, like always triple it. Go, instead of trying to get two more people a week, try and get six more people a week. Mm -hmm. Figure out how can I get the, like, triple what I'm actually looking for because the same amount of energy that goes into finding those two people is going to go into finding those six. And maybe if you don't get six, maybe you get three, maybe you get four, maybe you get five. Mm -hmm. It's still the same amount of energy that's going into it. Mm -hmm. So the way I see it is, is that knowing where you, knowing the truth of where you are, helps you because then you can go right this is this is the reality this is the number where can i immediately find that and then if i can't immediately find that how do i find that how do i add value in order to uh, create more income coming my way mm-hmm. um and it, i know it it i think for some people that sounds simplistic but when you're in it it's not simplistic in the sense that it's a simple strategy but you have to actually put that demand on yourself to go and do it and that's where people people would rather it just come to them or people would rather just re- reduce all of these outgoings instead of actually putting the demand on themselves mm-hmm. so the reducing of the outgoings is a temporary fix that that's kind of the message i want to i want to mm-hmm. give you know it's a temporary <clears throat> fix because there's only so much you can do that Mm-hmm. They're always going to – if you if, – if prices keep going up, there's only so much you can do before you, you can't do mm-hmm. that anymore. So be in charge of the growth by putting a demand on yourself. If you need that in the short term, fine, but then go over here and figure out a way you can put a demand on yourself. Mm. You said something about, you know, those people that are out there that they're working three jobs, et cetera, mm-hmm. and they're trying to get ahead because they're, you know, they're just trying to get more money in. It doesn't matter if you're going to get more money in if your system that you're using in the first place isn't aligned with the laws of nature. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be putting the wealth principles in place. And it's important for people to understand that with when they hear the laws of nature, they think, well, okay, now what's that? <laughs> but, and, and I mean, you don't need to know what that is. You just need to follow the system. And it's that like we've, a... we've, done, we've done all the work for you. We've done it all. So you don't need to know what those things are right now. You might want to spark some interest later on down the track uh-huh. because, you know, they're the it's rules. Cool of, to learn. They're the rules of the game. But if you understand that the system has been built for you, then and you're, you, I mean, you just got to ask yourself: Is the current system I'm using around my money got me working fucking three jobs a week, mm. have me away from my kids' soccer game, not there for my first for my kids' first recital? There's if, some. There's some organisation or there's something that's missing. That Perhaps has that you in that situation. Yep. You should, because you're obviously not, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a great statement that goes, you know, when somebody employs somebody that's got a degree, they don't employ them because of the fucking degree. They employ them because they turned up to a fucking lesson for fucking five years or six years in order to get yep. that degree. Yep. That's what they're, that's yeah, what they're yeah. looking for. The degree doesn't really mean anything. The question is, were they disciplined, organized, diligent, focused enough, and did they present when it was necessary and make it through the tough times. And that's really what you're hiring as much as you're hiring the skill. So, you know, one of the things we say often is the universe is waiting for you to declare your worth. Mm. This is what we're talking about. When mm-hmm. you put demand on yourself, you have to declare your worth. Mm-hmm. You have to show that you're disciplined, organised, etc. Mm-hmm. There's enough money out there to come into your hands. It's just what what's blocking that. And a big part of the time it's how you feel about yourself that's Mm. Like the mindset that says I have to work three jobs to get this happening instead of what's the system that I'm using that's actually going to make this work Mm -hmm. for me. Do Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then putting putting your – you know, people – when you're doing three jobs a week, 
or three jobs a day, as we've seen in some cases, you, there's a lot of things you're not short of, right? But the one thing that perhaps you are short of is having enough courage to be able to go and really have a look at what you're doing with your money. And and the payoff for doing that is enormous. Mm-hmm. Like, And we see it over and over, over and over, over again. Over, over and over again, all the time. We it's hear the stories cool. all the time, and it doesn't matter. I sit with some people sometimes, and I'm like... I, I, you know, I can't make that choice for you. I can't make the choice for you to stop and put some time into, l- but you're putting your fucking time and effort into the wrong place. Mm. Sure, if it takes a week for you to sit down one night every five days to get this right, I'm fucking telling you, it's going to pay off. Mm. Yeah, and I see it over and over and over again. It pays off. Yeah. And that's when your life changes and that's when things Well, that's around. when you start becoming inspired. You start realising that, yep, yeah, this is actually possible. And mm. just the smallest little wins will help lead you to that place and mm. just, it starts becoming like a, a snowball effect. Yeah, yeah. You want to start with just getting those small little wins on the board and realising and putting your trust in the fact that that system is what's going to get you there. And, you know, if you're working two or three jobs a day, you know, it, it, the it, – that's the cost you're paying for being disorganized. And I know people don't want to hear that, but that's the cost you're paying for being disorganized. If you were organized, I promise you, within a short space and time, you wouldn't be doing that. Because I, I, I can tell you, I've, I've looked at people that do that sort of stuff and I've thought, fuck, I want you to come and work in my organization. But I know that they haven't got the other levels of self-worth that's required in order to be able to step into a, a bigger game. I think, uh, so when, when you say that, I feel like the the thing i would the thing that i hear there is is that a self-worth thing mm. right so the organization may come as a result of that mm-hmm. but i feel like it's a self-worth thing mm-hmm. no one can fucking work your self-worth no it doesn't matter that that has to be on you mm-hmm. to do that that doesn't take away from the fact that there's people out there that are doing that and need to do that and that's all they know. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? It's just – it's just there's – I think the way to look at it is there's other people that are not doing that. There are other people that can – that have uh, – are earning maybe even the same amount and are able to get by in a different way. So – What's what's different between you and them? And I think the difference there is is the self worth thing. Mm-hmm. That's how I see mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And I, th- you know, a, a shout out to the people that are actually doing and following the principles, right? And you know, stop and take a minute to look in the mirror and acknowledge yourself for your efforts and what you've done, and acknowledge yourself for choosing to be, you know, different. You know, mm. not getting caught in that trap and stopping and going, you know what, I'm going to pick up the reins of my reality. I'm going to pick up the reins of my finances. I'm going to get myself organized and diligent and disciplined. Mm. you got to acknowledge yourself. Yep, definitely. Even if you live the most extraordinary life, there is always more to learn. This is why tens of thousands of people are using MJB Seminars techniques to hack their consciousness and bridge the gap from where they are to where they actually want to be. MJB seminars use cutting-edge transformational processes that are science-based and backed to help people break through subconscious barriers and limiting beliefs in order to reset, reboot and live inspired. If you'd like to know more today, Google search MJB seminars Bridge the Gap, click on the first link and watch the video. Now, for simply watching the video, you will also receive a complimentary coaching session with one of our master coaches valued at over $600 to help you get traction in your life today. Remember, live life inspired.